going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. This is a special episode because this is like a this is going to be like a 10 episode series um on the 2021 Olympic Games and I, and I have a co-host now. Um and I and I like to think of him just more of as just a host, but um Johnny Whale, um you know, he wants me to talk about Hoob and KGF all all day long, but uh, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself. And uh, yeah, we'll just dive into the episode. But anyways, Johnny, how you doing, man? Uh, not too bad. Um, if you can hear on John's voice, it's because uh, I'm obviously in the UK and he's in Colorado Springs or somewhere in America. He's he's living in 7 a.m. and I've got a nice 1 p.m. afternoon start. Yeah, I know. So, this is uh, rough. You're drinking wine and I'm drinking coffee. So it's, it's <laughs> you can um, drink wine if you want. Yeah, well, so because I'm in Pennsylvania and so we're on the East Coast and that's two hours different. So in Colorado Springs, it would be 5.30 a.m. right now, uh, 5.41. And now it's 7.41. So, but anyways, Johnny, tell tell the listeners a little bit about you, you guys who haven't listened to the episode or guys and gals who haven't listened to the episode. But yeah, tell them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I suppose if you want to, uh, it's probably best just to go back to the last one. If you want to pause this and go back and see, hear me talk shit for an hour earlier. <laughs> um, I mean, hopefully, uh, I mean, I, I I think the reason why I'm here is I think I've, we've got a good knowledge of track cycling. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a pest on that. Big fan. Um, even like looking, I spent like two hours just now looking through all the results and stuff. And there's all sorts of like weird and wonderful stuff that you can come up with. Um, and I suppose we just wanted to, uh, we just sort of chatting, shooting the shit as we do. Um, and we're thinking like track cycling as a sport is pretty bad at marketing itself, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I let's be honest. So. Um, I mean, we're having this other day with Dan about the, you know, the Formula One. Formula yeah. One is wonderful. Like the amount of like coverage and like they, 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 the sport pays for like multiple different organizations to run multiple podcasts, multiple websites, multiple YouTube channels. Like these aren't individual people doing it. This is the sport going out there and paying people to do it, to create publicity, to create attention for the sport, because that's what drives listeners. Um, so we thought there's, there's no one, no one does this for, for, for track cycling. You know, I mean, I mean, you get a lot of cycling podcasts out there. You've got everybody has a Tour de France podcast. Everyone has so, a road podcast, and, and so over and, it. But they're they're yeah. just a bit shit, really. I think, um, like they they seem to target everybody and nobody at the same time. Um, yeah. So hopefully, we're going to be quite in depth, quite knowledgeable. Um, we'll hopefully teach you a lot about track cycling. Um, well, hopefully, we won't mess up too much. Um, I mean, looking at some of the pronunciations of some of these names. Um, we're bound to butcher it, for sure. We're bound to butcher that. Um, especially my American. <laughs> fucking just trying to read it. It's awful. We'll leave, we'll leave John to pronounce the Japanese ones. Um, oh, I might but, actually um, not do too bad. I know a few of the Japanese writers, you know. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But speaking about road and everything else, you know, I just wanted, <laughs> being that it's two days away, we might as well just go ahead and do a quick like dive into the road race i mean we, you know we opened up the race profile and and i just kind of want to do a quick chat and like a kind of an open discussion and see if any of our any of the listeners will kind of dive into it but i'm already i'm already over it just in the sense that they've the the, the courses themselves are like pretty much cut in half especially the time trial like you know chloe diger pretty much could have gotten what was it like top 10 in the u23 men if at in italy um on the same course it was the same course same distance whatever um but here in in tokyo what is it half the distance yeah it's like it's, it's a completely different course yeah um i don't really want to say about this like it seems a bit i mean obviously the women's world tour races aren't as long as the men's world tour races yeah um, for sure the, the, the field's not gonna be as big but i just think it's 2021 like the time trial course is the perfect example. The men are doing two laps of a 22 K circuit. The women are doing one lap, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's not a, there's road closure issues. There's none of this. Like it's, yeah. I just think well, it's a bit of a disgrace to be honest. Well, for the road race, I mean, the men don't even want to ride that long. <laughs> it's like for whatever reason, they feel like they have to make this absurd distance. What is it like? Almost... 200, 234 K for the men. Jesus um, Christ. 400 4860 meters of elevation which is yeah. which is i don't know what that is in american but it's, it's a shit ton yeah and it's mm -hmm. kind of 
and I already know my pick for that, and it's Wild Van Art, hands down. Like, I'm I'm going for it, and 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 I'll be the fanboy to say it because it's just like, I mean, the guy can do everything. So put him on a 234k road race with like a, what is it, a slight downhill finish. Um, here, let me pull up. Yeah, it's like it's like it's not a downhill finish, but there's like a little kicker, and then, um. <clears throat> It's actually a little bit of a false flat, almost. It looks like into the film. It's going to be like seven, eight hours on the bike, isn't it? Seven hours plus. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not your normal race. It'd be pretty special when I watch. I think. Like yeah. fair play to anyone that watches the whole thing. Um, Man, yeah. Well, well we have a schedule, <laughs> a classy schedule that uh, Johnny put together. So right now it's slotted for July twenty fourth. Eleven was at eleven. AM to 6:15 PM Japan time, and then if, uh, um, for the UK and uh, over in GMT time standards, we're at 3 AM to 10:15 AM, which puts uh, it in Colorado Springs pretty much at like 10 PM the night before um, into like 5 AM the next morning. So that's going to be savage um, and pretty much insane. Um, I think the interesting but- thing about these road races. Especially the time trial is is the selection process to how we've got to what teams we've got. Um, yeah, like it's not a it's not your standard. Obviously, in the World Champs, there's a you know you have to qualify spots, but there's there's more spots available at World Champs than there are at Olympics. Yeah. Um, so teams of you know they're really struggling with the actual numbers they've got. You know, like yeah, I, I know GB have only got four slots, um, and they've got to get two TT riders out of the four riders that are doing the road race. So it's, it's, it's not going to be a case of, you know, seven riders leading it out for the whole race. Like it's going to be, it's going to be a very, very different race, I imagine, um, because of that. And it's going yeah. to dilute the field in many ways. You know, it's, can you imagine a, the hundred meters are like, sorry guys, you've only qualified two spots. So sorry to yeah, watch. I mean, I, and I kind of wonder, like, I mean, the, the U S is kind of like that. I think they're only sending two men diving into that oh my internet connection is already unstable that's the that's the luck of being in this uh this college apartment but <laughs> i'm working off my van's internet right now um but yeah so diving back into um into the time trial and, and, and into the road race and, and selection and so on and so forth like i do think it's going to be like the onesies and twosies of of uh of these like teams i guess more or less like I mean, obviously, Philippe Ogana, I was a major favorite in the time trial. Um, you know, Pochkar, obviously, probably in the road race. Mark Hershey in the road race. Um, and then for the women, you know, Chloe Digert, uh in the time trial. You know, the, the Fluten, is, she, is, she, is, Cl- is Chloe Digert alive? She's alive. She's actually there now. She's already in Tokyo. Um, I know that uh, I don't I don't know why she's there so early. Um, because I mean, the rest of the U.S. riders aren't there, and some of the other road racers aren't there. Um, but yeah, so she's Seems she's to already have disappeared there. Disappeared off the world. Um, yeah, and so she's alive. She's moving. Her leg is. I, I you know I saw her recently. It looked it looked fine. She looks she looks like be hanging in there. She's doing well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited to see you know what she can you know do and put out. Um, but anyway, so let's uh, let's kind of dive into that the next topic at hand we should probably say uh, that we decided to do the road about two minutes before we started this podcast oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure it's a quick 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 road race review i was just like it's it's two other podcasts are available for the road race <laughs> yeah yeah, other podcasts, yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna we'll, we'll definitely highlight it but we're not gonna i we think know the time three or trial, four cyclists names so that works yeah, yeah i think the time trial is definitely what i want to dive into for sure because i i just like the tech of the time trial but um but anyways, let's go ahead and start to pivot towards the track. All right, we're what? We are six days out from first team sprint qualifying, uh, or maybe even more than that. Yeah, we're like ten days out um, from team sprint qualifying, and then the men's team pursuit qualifying. Which I'm hearing rumors of teams doing some trials and already going w- r- wicked fast <laughs> um I, you know i don't know how much we can dive in and talk to about that i know you know new zealand at their national champs rode a 40 was it 47 or 40 yeah i think it was 47, 47. 
the day before they did their national champs. Um, and that was, I think, three months ago, two months ago. Um, well, that was, that was December time, wasn't it? January. Yeah. But, um, yeah. There's, and, there, there's and, a lot of smoke and mirrors about who's been doing what. Like, this is, I, this is the key like point for this Olympics is it's in a normal cycle, you do the world champs in February. Uh -huh. It's only a few months until you get to the Olympics in August. And realistically, you don't, the form book doesn't change much. Like, yeah, obviously the equipment people are using changes. Um, but you know, you kind of know where you're going to be. Whereas obviously the COVID word, um, they've had 18 months since the last major team pursuit race. I mean, I don't, I, there's been a, a few World Cups and Class 1s where guys have done races. Um, there's a few sort of, you know, people have live streamed stuff. A little bit of Instagram has come out about races, but nobody has no idea who's doing what. And you, you can learn a lot in 18 months. You can develop a lot. Um, so it's, it's like, we were, I was looking through. I was like, who, 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 who's going to be the favorite? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and... I like, like I I can't yeah. even decide. I like I want to say Italy, but then no, again, no. you gotta you gotta know you gotta know. Uh, I kind of wonder how they would handle the eighteen months. I've been to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if they're just like, oh, it's eighteen months, you know? Like, uh, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We got Ghana. It's all right. It's all good. And but I feel like a country like GB literally was just like, all right, we have this time. We're this far off. We need these things and they had it planned down to the day to the hour to almost the second of what they were going to do every day what they were going to eat every day you know <laughs> where they were going to you know how they were going to walk in the grocery store almost well dialed and like because it's just like to me with with that time there's so much that can be done and there's so much motivation i think that can also be lost in that 18 months i mean you literally legit had guys retire the day like the moment the games were moved to the next year, boom, done. Yeah, I mean, it's like Steph Morton's probably the biggest one that stands out to me. I mean, the yeah. they, they they were second in the team sprint at Worlds, and now I don't even don't even know if the Aussies are going to be taking a team for team sprint. Um, like they've been doing this big recruitment drive to find find anyone. You know, they just don't have the strength and depth of women's sprinting at the moment. Um, but it's yeah, it's, it's it's different. And that 18 really months, that. how, I honestly, yeah. Oh, your, 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 your crappy Wi-Fi is cutting out again, man. S sorry, am I back? I'm so proud to not have the shit Wi-Fi for a change. Yeah. Am I back? <laughs> yeah, am yeah, I, I got you. All right. So, yeah, because I'll just edit this out. So, let's just go ahead and dive into the, into the, uh, the team sprint. I honestly think that it's, I, th I think the Dutch is going to have it on lock. I think it's, I think those guys are just on another level. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a no brainer. And then it's a matter of who, who's, who's coming into second. And uh, with, with the, uh, <clears throat> with the teams that, you know, that we have listed, you know, you got GB, Australia is not putting in Matt and then the French. Yeah. So, I uh, will the, the, the sort of the, even the the lineups from world you talk about retirement um yeah. like the, the french came they had they were bronze in worlds but since then gregor borgia is retired uh quinton lafarc turned into a team suit rider so he's not going to be there so that's like you know they, they I don't, who they're going to send what's their team have they qualified yeah. riders um i don't even know these things um yeah but i mean the the Aussies, I think, is a interesting one as a sort of the outlier, where they came third without Matt Glazer. Obviously, he was covering from I think it was throat cancer at the time. Yeah, it was, um, then it was pretty serious. Yeah. But like, if you you know you you take one of the best riders in the world and plop him straight into a team that came third with all their wonderful upgrade package, who knows? But like you say, there was the Dutch a, a second and a half or whatever it was ahead of everybody else. Um, and I'm sure GB are going to close that gap. I'm sure everyone's going to close the gap, but I just, you know, those, those, those boys are not, they haven't sat on their hands for a year. Um, yeah. And I, th I think, I think just after my conversations with, with Taya Wass, uh, just about how, how those guys are pushing each other. It, I just don't. I can't yeah, see I it not happening. Yeah. I just don't see them getting slower. I just see them literally just 
getting faster and stupid strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, more than anything. And then, you know, especially for an event, like when we move to the sort of the sprint and the Kieran, like these are, it's not just who's the strongest cunt and press the pedal as hard as they can. You know, it's like, yeah. it's tactics and the feel of a race plays such a massive role in it. Um, yeah. And obviously nobody's had this race experience in the last year and a half. Yeah. So who's, who's going to do well is going to be the teams that have such a, you know, the highest strength and depth. Like if you think the, the Dutch do a, all right, boys, we do team sprint, you know, we do, we're doing a Kieran today or whatever. Like they've got six, seven of the best riders in the world to come up against. Yeah, um, I think the world worlds and European champs has been a Hugelan Lavrace and final for the last two years or whatever. And like it's, you know, like that. I think that more than any bit of equipment is going to give those boys an advantage. Um, yeah, just that sort of race rustiness that some of the nations may have. Yeah, and then and then with the women, you know, we have from worlds previous year, we you know we had Germany, Australia, and China. Um, what how do you think that's going to shake up into 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 tokyo i mean i i do like the note that you have in here with the canadian wild horses i mean i do think <laughs> there's i i i don't think like especially kelsey mitchell it's like if if anybody knew her previously like i would have never assumed and i didn't know her personally but i just i watched her you know get started and then just pretty much shoot to the top and so I, I would, I'm pretty interested to see what they can do at this level and what they've been doing over the last, you know, 18 months. That's the one. If you're a, if you're a young, unexperienced rider to be given 18 months to develop your craft is, you know, it's gold dust. Um, and I think especially for Canada is, uh, they've got a nice upgrade package coming. I believe. Yeah. Um, oh Yeah. We obviously, I, obviously, like everything's rumors on the street, you know. But it's, yeah. um, I think they're going to be fully vortexed up. So that's, you know, it's it's gone are the days where we rock up to the Olympics and GB are the only ones in the, you know, they don't, they're not going to have five, six, seven percent error gains on the day. It's, you know, even if it is an advantage, which I, I, I'm sure it will be, it'll only be a percent, you know, two percent. Um, so it does sort of open up the playing field so much more. Um, like I know, I know Vortec with the, so obviously the Olympic rules have always been that you have stuff has to be commercially available, but realistically that rule hasn't been abided by in any way. Um, well, it is com commercially available because like, uh, when, when the hope bike or the Lotus bike got released, you know, tail bosses in the, you know, we were all at a world cup when this happened. And, uh, I think, I think we we're in Belarus actually, um, Johnny's favorite favorite place to be <laughs> and uh and yeah i think he was he called in and pretty much was like asking how he could get it and they were telling him it's not available and then they were telling him you know it's like i don't know thirty four thousand dollars or something crazy or 30 oh yeah oh like yeah. it's well this is the thing they're in the rules it has to be within normal levels like i yeah. mean the, the the hope wheels really aren't even that expensive like they're they're pretty much the same price as set of camp bags if you buy them retail um and i know the Teo bought a set of those. He used them for his trials, which caused a bit of stir in a GB land. And they were just like, yeah. well, why the fuck's he got my wheels? <laughs> I haven't even <laughs> seen my wheels yet. Yeah. Um, but so like, I, it'd be curious to see who's bought what. And I think there's going to be a battle on the velodrome. And there's also going to be a battle off the velodrome where people are running around calling out each other's equipment. Like, no, 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 no. You, you, you didn't qualify that. <laughs> like, you can't use yeah. that. Um, yeah, that's that's also a good point. Yeah, because uh, you know, if you want to talk about that too, a little bit more in depth, so because some of our listeners don't understand that, like it's not like you can't just rock up with a new set of handlebars that came out within the last you know six months or you know, yeah, exactly. Your frame, like it has to be, it had to be ridden in what? Which World Cup was that? Was it? Was it I think Scotland? there was there was a couple of qualification events where the UCI had a 3D sprint, 3D scanner, and you would register your equipment. There's a big long list that we might show you on the list of what is qualified and what isn't qualified. And it's literally a case of like every nation had to qualify a Shimano pedal. You know, it's yeah. not like <laughs> like you want to ride the Altegra pedal. Sorry, you didn't qualify. You got you know like it's. Yeah. And it'd be curious to see how curious like how strictly are they going to actually abide by that rule um and how much do the nations even know about that like there's a lot of stuff that was qualified as a prototype 
So if it was qualified as a prototype, it didn't have to be completely finished and you can make certain alterations on the construction of this, that, the other. Um, so for example, the, I don't know if people have seen that there's a, an, an aero coach chain ring that's come out. That's, the, you know, they're, they're selling it for a thousand pounds. Like that, that's not being registered. Like, you know, they're selling it as a Olympic chain ring. Like, you know, the, the Swiss will be using this, but that's not been registered. Now, is that going to be passed under a prototype for their previous model or what? Like, you know, it's, there's going to be, it's going to be a lot of coaches on the start line pointing fingers. Um, it's, it's not one you want to be a UCI commissaire for. Yeah. It sounds that. like there's going to be some protesting for sure. And I, I yeah, wonder, yeah. I wonder how many times we're going to have the conversation of somebody getting relegated or disqualified because <laughs> of their equipment and, and you know, if that's going to shake up the standings at all, but hopefully, that, hopefully like, that it, doesn't it's, happen. It's going to ruin the event if that's not the case. Like, I mean, I don't yeah. know if there's going to be a pre-qualification event where like, you know, in the, there's obviously there's track sessions before the, before the races where people show, you know, can you familiarize the track and stuff. So maybe there's going to be some process of approving the kit beforehand, but I hope we're not in the case, you know, in a situation where, you know, Germany's DQ'd because, you know, they used some chopsticks that they weren't allowed to use or whatever. Like yeah. it's, it's, yeah. But it's it, it's it's the game, you know. Like it's what it is now. Like everyone's searching for advantages, um, and the Olympics brings up one that. So a lot of nations, a lot of nations have contracts with these set sponsors. So, whoever you want to call it, like you know, the Dutch are sponsored by laser helmets, by Cougar bikes, you know, um, yeah. by a racer. So like, but it's the Olympic Games falls into a sort of like a shady gray area for a lot of these contracts where they're allowed to use whatever equipment they want. Um, and some nations are going to be allowed to have free pick of anything on the market that's been registered, whereas other nations are going to be stuck to the equipment that they're sponsored by. Um, and I think the the biggest one that everyone's going to see straight off is this is going to be the, the POC Olympics. Like I think <laughs> the number of POCs that I think are going to be out there is, is going to be pretty mental. Um, yeah, but let's let's you know because I just got finished with the U.S. Nationals and the amount of Pac helmets and Argon <laughs> 18s that showed up <clears throat> and that have been in the past, you know, I mean, just with the, the hoob craze and whatever else, you know, you've done the data, you've seen it. Um, it's definitely position based, right? Or do you think the majority of the people that can put that Pac helmet on is, is it actually worth, worth the gains? Um, yeah, like, I mean, it works really well for the, like, Previously, it worked really well for us because of our positions, and we and obviously we developed around that helmet um, on skin suit extension bike setup as well. So it's you know you it's the the direction that aerodynamics is going to. Obviously, this is a bit out of my wheelhouse, but you know it's it's individualized around the one rider. Um, and I'm I, it may not be this Olympics, but I'm sure next Olympics will have four different skin suits, four different helmets four different extensions for a team pursuit team you know it'll be like this is the package that's built around that one rider um well it's funny you say that because um i feel like every day i see a new extension right like so the watch shop <laughs> extension was was the thing you know and then that or well i guess back then it was carbon wasp you know and then it became you know the watch shop extension and then then it became this very adjustable extension but now you have what arrow coach i just saw these things called arrow lab i saw this thing called roadhouse uh or like roundhouse road wasp or something or another and like, i mean it, it's really not that tricky to make them you know ultimately yeah. like it, it's quite easy to make a very basic product um i think but um i know from the development of the watch extensions it's very difficult to make a strong product you know like a strong and reliable product well, it's like, funny you say that because so, so, I have the watch up and I was like, oh, okay, these, the, the, I didn't think of it. I just, just you know, they were, there were bars, but then I tested the Aero Lab. I could literally flex them. Like I yeah, could do this yeah. with them. And they, and the only difference between them was like. The only difference pounds? between them is that I die. <laughs> yeah. yeah <that> too. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're doing 35 into a bend and one of those snaps, that's not going to end well for you. No, um, and I mean that goes into that goes into Ashton Lambie. I mean, hearing that story of, you know, the two days before he sets the world record in Bolivia, he snaps an extension mid just you know yeah. four O's or whatever it was that he was doing absurd time. But uh, anyways, you know, speaking of that, let's just go ahead and dive into the team pursuit then, uh, the fun stuff. Um, you know, being that we're talking about upgrade packages, we just saw GB 
um, it seems like all those guys, you know, aren't the best at social media, but the one day they're good <laughs> at social media, they all just post the same photo. Uh, but then one so, of them. So much as if they did a photo shoot like yesterday. Yeah, so, somebody <laughs> had a photo shoot yesterday and there's not a single wrinkle in a skin suit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, man, um, I, I'm not going to lie. Like a part of me goes, part of me thinks that GB is going to rock up and upset some days. I mean, especially after doing worlds where most people were like, well, I guess GB is not even going to contest. Mm. Um, but I, I honestly think the 18 months had to be spent. Well, I mean, they just know what they're doing. Like if those, I th and you know better than I do, obviously, but it just seems like they're really good trainers. Like they know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. I, I think the the team pursuit is a funny one. I mean, I've, I've had a few chats with a lot of coaches and physiologists and performance people about this. Like, how do you even train for a team pursuit? Like, if you if you look at how people have done this, like, it, let's take it, Italy and Australia are my, the best examples. I think, like, Italy just do road racing. You know, there there are a bunch of road races. You've got um, Ghana, Consoni, like the, the, the you know uh, Jonathan Milan. Like these guys are big strong road riders effectively aren't they you know like they're time trialists they they do a little bit of track you know they drip hit, drip feed in and out with little camps um but th and then you, you you twist it and you've got the australians and these guys are the weightlifters you know like yeah. they've they're, they're all you know they've they've had massive blocks like you know some of their funding has been based on accepting that the training they may do may not work you know <laughs> yeah. um and then you know they spent sort of years you know, you're going to do shit for the next two years, but you know, cause we're going to train, we're going to have you in the gym three times a week. We're going to have you doing massive over gear talk work. Um, we are going to be on the track twice a week, all the time doing technique work. And I think the Aussies are the, are technically the most proficient team in the world. Um, the men, especially, um, I don't know about the women with their changes on the straight. Um, I don't know if anyone like, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I think it would be very interesting if they, for the women, it'd be really curious to see if they do still change on the straight. Yeah. Um, for the for people that don't really know, like normally you change in the bend, you got the banking, you come back down, you use the, you know, you, it's a, it's, you're up and you're down as quickly as possible. It's maybe two seconds max that you're out of the wind. Whereas the Aussie girls have been changing at the exit of the bend up on the straight. You don't gain much height, but you spend more time out of the wind before you come back in. How, long, how many um, times did they do that, though? They only did it. They've done it a few times. They've done it for have a they? whole cycle. They've done it for a whole cycle. Um, and it, and it, it, the, the rationale, I think, behind it is that it reduces the power surges required. Um, I think it's obviously the male-female physiology difference is the women struggle to produce power above threshold because they've got smaller anaerobic capacities compared to men. Like, I think a woman's generally around the sort of 25 uh, kilojoule range, whereas a man will be you know, 40 plus really at this yeah. sort of level. Um, so that means they struggle to produce that sort of power above. So if you do miss your change, it's very, very costly for a lot of these girls to get back on. Um, whereas the idea is this, it's supposed to smooth out the effort for them. Um, and I think it works really well when they nail it perfectly. But I've seen a lot of races where it's been down to three riders and it's that third three rider change on the straight where they, mm. the girl just, it just, oh, 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 oh and she's gone. Um, yeah. and I think it, it, it exemplifies what's going to happen at this Olympics. I think it's going to be because there's so many people that are operating on such a high level. There's no comfort zone anymore. I think it's, there's going to be a lot of teams, you know, falling apart. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you've got to either try and ride a world record or DNF, you know, there's no point having that little half percent in your back pocket that, you, you know, you finish a ride. I think there's going to be, you know, riders dangling off the back of races, most times i think um, yeah. which which makes the, the seeding for the qualifying very very important for the team pursuit because obviously if you're off last you know exactly what you've got to do you know yeah. um whereas if you're first off and i think for the world rankings is what it's based on um and i think the aussie men are you know they're they're at a disadvantage on that for that because they're ranked quite low because they just didn't go to a lot of races um so they're gonna have to go off go blind best you've got hope it's good enough whereas some of the other teams further down the line are going to know what exactly they've got to do and i think at this game with the margins being so close that's going to be crucial i think yeah so 
I guess, I guess diving into the a little bit of that conversation of the comment you made where it's like, you're going to have to ride a world record. What, what are you going to have to ride? You think? <laughs> Did I? I've heard rumors from the Italian camp that they think it's going to be slow, but I think that's just batshit crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, and and we kind of had that conversation too last night. Uh, you know, in the like the living room, the common area of just like, you know, do they, do they anybody break forty? You know, or does it go nuts? And that's like, look, I think if you're putting on, I mean, to go forty, you're doing almost seventy k an hour. For and that means in line, you're doing seventy five plus. If you're, you're going to do a sub 40, you're going to drop some 12s, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be nuts. And so I do think the world record gets broken. Oh, 100%. Um, I think the record gets broken, but I don't think it will get broken by much realistically. Yeah. Um, like the, the, the special record the Danish did, they had the advantage of rushing into a team for that. And I just don't think you're going to get that this games because everyone's at a very similar level. Um, but you like, cause it's obviously, it's, it's not a, it's not linear, you know, like if you want to ride a, you know, if you want to ride three kilometers an hour faster, it's not just the rider at the front that has to do that power. It's the riders at two, three, and four that also have to soak up that, you know, added wattage. Um, and ultimately these guys are, I mean, holistically then the, the guys now are doing the same power for the four, four minutes than they were doing 10 years ago, but they're just yeah. doing it in a, in a better position at a lower cadence ultimately. Um, so I think there is going to be a sort of, a a cap obviously last year or well, two years ago whatever it was now at the olympics everyone at the worlds rather everyone made that seismic jump and you know we had teams doing 46s and it was just like what are they, what's happening yeah. like but i just don't think that's going to happen again um, well i mean you even had japan drop down to a 50 like they mm -hmm. were they were a team that was doing four 401s like at yeah. world cups and then boom 350 like um i think it, the the whole surgence of aerodynamics it was almost as if people didn't know what it was i mean you look <laughs> at a guy like ed clancy i mean it's a great example like you look at a guy like ed clancy and it's like he used to ride super wide bars straight extensions um i mean head almost just completely up in the air uh, he's broad shouldered dude but now i mean he's his chin is into his forearms like all those guys are are like, I mean, the entire GB, they all released photos yesterday of them just pretty much kissing their forearms. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you, you want to see what 18 months does for a team. Look at the photos of the, the lads that the GB lot put out yesterday and then look at the photos of the same guys at Worlds a few weeks yeah. ago, last year. Like, it's these are completely different. It's so far. Like, they've... I think GB have, have got quite lucky with COVID. Because normally how it's set up, uh, I don't know how different nations run it. Like I know the Aussies have a lot better run at how that how they access the track. Same with the Danish, but GB it's you know it's owned by the council. You know like they they have a set number of times and they've got to get Mary down the road has to do her you know Madison session you know at, at eight pm. So you can't you can't just use a track whenever you want. Whereas with COVID um, and UK Sport and the rules that they had in here they basically had free run of the track like before they were tenants in their you know in their own building whereas they owned the velodrome for, for 15 months or whatever it was so the amount of error testing the amount of product development they've been able to do in that time is substantial and if you look at those photos you can see four very very well refined riders um and like it, they wouldn't have had that if, they, if, if it wasn't for covid so the sort of the the covid disadvantage i mean a lot of people have you know, for a lot of sports, people have talked about who's benefited, who's lost out from from COVID and that extra time. Um, I think the access these elite athletes have to the velodromes during lockdowns is, will have played in their hands a lot, um, which will obviously raise the level of the whole event. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think that goes to goes into uh, the U.S. women. Like, I think the U.S. women is actually uh, oddly a young team in the sense of experience. I mean, you look at Emma White, um, Lily Williams, uh, even Megan Jastrab, like those, I mean, Lily's first time on a track bike, I think was in 2019. Mm. I mean, you know, USA, very young team, like the, yeah. of anyone that's going to benefit, like obviously the, the GB women are, I think they're what they are the most talented group of athletes in the building for BC. Um, but it, they're all mostly experienced riders, you know, um, you've got Laura Kenny, Kate Archbold, Lel Barker, like these, these guys have been doing team suit forever. forever. Um, 
So like the progression curve on them, probably not as big as someone that's only been doing it for a few weeks, really. Yeah, um, no, it's going to be exciting to see because we were, we were chatting about it. It's like, oh, well, you know, GB just comes out of nowhere every year and that's what's mm -hmm. going to beat out the US. And it's like, yeah, but I, I think the 18 months of experience is what's going to bring, um, you know, because I know that, that, that you know, you, you talk about who lucked out, like the US, we have a track here in the Springs and it's not a great track. Um, it's not, a, I don't think it's a great track for teams to be training on, but they closed that track down to only people that were going to the Olympics. So unless you had a shot at Tokyo, you were not in that track. Or if you were Ashton going for a nation's cup, you could ride it. Uh, if you were Magnus, who was trying to break a record, you could ride it. But <laughs> Who's this Magnus guy? I remember talking about him, but he's sort of disappeared now, is not he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's riding with Rally, I guess, now on the road. But but yeah, and I mean, but to, to his benefit, or to, to, to the benefit of his doubt, it's like, why would he stay on the track when he can just ride the road, especially when the tracks are closed? you know, for, for him anyway. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's going to be really interesting for, for, especially for the women. And I know the Kiwi girls have been riding really, really strong um, and, 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 and kind of pushing forward if they can try not to crash in training. I know that there's been some, some hiccups there. And, and mm -hmm. so it's been, it's been all over the place. And so it'll be interesting to kind of see how, how, you know how those finals shake out and and it can kind of go about don't discount the germans would be my one like yeah. they they yeah. they didn't do very well at worlds um but they did all right you know but like they they actually had the fastest time at worlds they had a poor qualifying they rode a lot of their good kit already at that world champs but you know they've got if i i, I would imagine if you did an ip and a flying kilo whatever you wanted to do to sort of like quantify an individual rider for a team pursuit I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the average best team. Um, yeah. But it's just whether they can put it together as a team. And obviously, it doesn't really matter what you do individually. It's a, it's a team pursuit. It's not an individual. But, you know, they're, if, if they get it together, they could be a real, real you know, risk on it. Well, Italy's been growing, too. I think the women, the women from Italy have been kind of like they, they've been getting better and better as the worlds keep going on. They, they kind of hovered around that third spot mm. they always i just of... i just just don't rate them just don't rate yeah. them. italians like <laughs> I, I i think they're really good riders but they need a good coach you know they need a yeah. good coach they need to buy into it like technically they're so poor yeah. right especially the men like some of the videos that the men have popped out like it's just like even like you watch the i mean i've watched the like the highlights from the world champs like yeah they rode a 46 the men but they also did most of it on the red <laughs> yeah like not not like on the red like above the red like they were lucky if they touched a bit of black yeah um but like i, I just it doesn't it's curious because you, you you see like obviously techniques drilled into you drilled into you this has to be fucking perfect you know you got to be like oh you were like in gv land it's like if you were like a few inches above the you know two inches above the black it's called out you know especially with there's there's no pads like obviously there's normally sandbags around the track it's not actually sand it's foam yeah, yeah. but um the new rules is there isn't foam pads anymore so there's not going to be anything in your way effectively like normally like even if you're on the black sometimes with the sort of speed these guys are going and you lean over your pedal can clip the pad mm -hmm. and that i mean there's a famous one of the canadians man two if you had a world cup for final hit, he hit a pad with his foot and it took out his, his pals behind him like it's but not having that risk there it's you know, there's a, it, it, it costs you a lot if you ride higher than the black and the guys are going to be riding sub black. And I just, I just don't see how Italy are going to compete. You know, at some point, Ghana's 800 watts is going to run out, you know, like you can do 800 watts on the red or you could do 600 on the black. Yeah, um, no, no, for sure. And, but I mean, it kind of goes back to the, you know, the U S and trying to chase Lambie around just because one guy can do that doesn't mean you <laughs> can just follow it for ages, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's, it, it's kind of that as well. Um, but I do think that's interesting. The, 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 the you know, the, what I guess the, the foam pads or whatever they are, um, are finally getting pulled out of the way, man. How savage would that be if they actually were sandbags though? Um, they used, they used to be, they used to be back ruined. in the day. Damn back when men, back when men were when and cadences were above oh. 130. <laughs> oh, that would ruin somebody's day. Um, yeah. We're gonna we're, we're gonna go ahead and start to close out. Like me and Johnny were j joking yesterday about the fact that we could literally spend one episode 
just talking about extensions and, and <laughs> going on. Um, so, but I think it's a... important before we go, I think it's important to chat about the bunch of events. We've literally not talked about a bunch of events. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't even think like, yeah, we, we, we dive into it. That, that's two medals. And that, that's yeah. like, obviously the way that, uh, people have selected teams is he heavily emphasized on the bunch event. So a lot of teams have, so I, I only know GB for an example, they've got five spots that they can take to the Olympics for the track. And, you yeah. know, yeah, that's, so you've got to get, you've got three medals. You pick your best team to get three medals. Um, obviously if there's two bunch events and one team pursuit event, obviously you don't put all your eggs in your team suit basket anymore. Um, and obviously teams are going around this funny ways. Like, so Italy, uh, you know, obviously Ghana's riding the team pursuit and the road. Um, I know Yuri Havoc, the Yuri Havoc, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Yeah, that's, um, right. that's right. For the, uh, for the Netherlands, he's doing the Madison, but he's also doing the road race. You know, like, there are ways to get around this. Um, and teams have been quite clever in how they select their teams to get the most. Like, you know, I literally looked at the start list an hour ago and uh, Mikkel Morku is not on the start list. Like, how, he's Madison world champ. You know, he's, he was Cavs lead out in Tour de France, like clearly going well. Um, More cops than on, uh, not on the list? Not on the list, yeah. So I don't know how he's going to be racing. Um, obviously, the, 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 the Denmark have five riders already for track they got lassie not lassie they got nicholas larson back he's down for the marathon and the omnium which is telling because he's not raced anything big for years because he keeps crashing and falling over and slipping on ice and just basically like they've, they've rubbed him in you know cotton wool for, for a year and a half and he's obviously pinging if he's down for madison and omnium for that well do you have the start list up now because who did who who's italy putting in for the omnium uh omnium is Viviani. Viviani yeah 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 okay because not winning that I well and see this sounds really shitty but it's like I know he's the Olympic champion but I, I wanted like I there's... he's he's everyone's favorite you know like he's the guy that I think everyone wants to win but, but there's but there's other but there's other I think there's other people from Italy that I would put into the omnium right now who can say it yeah yeah honestly okay. I mean in in and and just because like, I mean, just based off recent results, mm -hmm. I mean, and just in the way he's been riding, I think, and you're maybe... not, you're, you're not winning on that, that cheapy De Rosa bike. Sorry. Get, get yeah. your Pinarello back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and well, they must be paying him pretty well, I guess. I hope so. Um, yeah. Co contract um, not renewed. Um, yeah. But... And obviously Ka Cameron Myers is not going to be there. Like yeah. he is, he is one of the greatest male bunch riders ever. Not going to be there. Which is really, really sad situation. Yeah. Um, you know, so sending out sending out some vibes to him on that. I know he'll have several more Olympics he'll be able to attend, but that's that's gotta be pretty heavy, not only to miss the Olympics, but just having those family issues right now. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> but yeah, and I mean Google or Google Roger from Germany <laughs> crashed. <laughs> I can't even get it out right now. Uh, he's the he, crashed he did the tour pretty hard. He's done his first track session today. Obviously, there's a little bit of Instagram stalking there. But, yeah. like, you know, he's he's ridden the track today. <laughs> like, the games are starting in a few weeks, mate, a few days. <laughs> yeah. um, it just highlights the strategies that guys are going for this. Um, yeah. Well, I think, I honestly think the Madison's going to be high up on that guy's list, um, which yeah. the Madison alone, I mean, especially for the men, I you think it breaks 60K an hour? Yeah, easy. Easy. It's easy, going easy. to be wild. Yeah. Um, and while while the, ha the yet again, like the sprinters, there's not there's not a lot of form going into these races. Um, yeah. And obviously, like I'm I, I I'm not a punch rider, <laughs> but like you know, it's the having ridden the races with the bike with the equipment. I know the Aussies had some problems with their wheels and stuff they used at the last Worlds, but like it's you know it's 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 new. It's all going to be new to them. And like the there's a stupid UCI rule whereby class ones only have a 80 lap Madison, whereas they're going to go to the Olympics and they're going to ride 120 laps. And like that, that's a different event. Men and women, they're going to do an extra 40 laps. Like yeah. women, men might be more actually. I'm going to get confused on that. I'll already well, called out again. Uh, and, and I think the it's UCI like to be sexist, but yeah, well, it's, you know, just it, it, nationals. It, it, we rode, it's... we rode a 26 K points race in the omnium final at nationals mm -hmm. this year I, omniums are the same 
so that's yeah. that's that's a set format across of la, you know the distance but the marathon is just a lot longer um yeah and you you can uh, you, 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 guys do really well at the sort of the, the the power acquired and the racing style at a world champs versus a world cup versus a class one are completely different and i think it's going to be an even you know a, a surprise again to jump into an olympics because it's you know it's, it's very rare that you get so many people peaking for the same event with the best kit you know um so there's a lot of unknowns there for the men and the women well i'm looking at your your olympic notes and i i didn't write these but i'm looking at the women mate where is where is valente valente oh i don't know Dude, i i think the that's... usa are gonna do well in the madison i think i'll give them that i think yeah. the i think traditionally she's been sort of on her own a bit um yeah. but now I think it's Megan Jastrap's going to be doing it with her. Um, yeah, Megan she's... Jastrap will be doing the Madison with her, but she'll be doing the Omnium. And I mean, she... Valente in the Omnium? Oh, no yeah. one's going to beat. No one's going to beat Kirsten Field. I think. I think it's if if yeah, I can't see it happening. I mean, I think Ke Laura Kenny is going to be different because obviously going into Worlds before she'd crashed heavily at the World Cup in Canada. Yeah. Um, she crashed in the scratch race of the Omnium, and uh, Kirsten Veal got rele relegated after that. So the, the the results from the Omnium from Worlds take a sort of pinch of salt on. Um, you know, you, uh, Patanosta was injured a little bit this in a sort of I think it was like summer last year with knee injuries. So she's I've not seen her do much. Um, it's curious because I, I had Balsamo down as like, yeah, she's doing the Omnium, but it, nope, not doing it. Um, oh, wow. it yeah, yeah, Italy definitely on my list for the for the Madison for the women. Um, yeah, France, France have a really good young team of Clara Caponi, um, uh, Marie Lynette, I think it is. I can't remember. I mean, I wrote it down. Yeah, there you go. Got that right. I I honestly think I do think the Dutch win the women's Madison. Yeah, um, I just think it's just a really it, uh, unfortunately in the women's Madison, it's it's a lot of strength because I think there's a there's a bit of a discrepancy from, you know, first all the way to last, like in, in strength. And, and even the technique is just kind of a bit all over the place, but it's like, I honestly think that that, that's just two of the strongest and they're just going to ride away from it. And you're just going to be fighting for second. And like, even in the U S I, I know that like you got Valente and you got Megan, both strong riders, but I think Valente has the, Valente is going to have the experience. She's going to have the, She's going to have that like will of like, oh, I've been here. I've done this before. I don't know how Megan's going to handle being what, you know, 21, 20. And I don't think that matters. Things. I don't think that matters. These, these, these girls and boys are super confident. They're, they're, alph they're alphas. They don't care about that. You're like yeah. it's, it's the Olympics. It's, it's going to get them going. Um, I disagree with the discrepancy in the women's Madison on that. You think? The technique differences. Yeah. I think. I would agree with that if it was a World Cup, um, mm. if it was a and maybe class that's one. where I'm coming from. You know, it's like it's yeah. kind of like after watching all the World Cups, it's just like you have these three, four teams that are just yeah, yeah, on a completely different level. I think that's going to be different this time. I really do. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Madison's a new event for the girls. Like it, this is the first time it's going to be in the Olympics for for the females. Obviously, it used to be in for the men, but now it's now we got both because the UCI aren't completely stupid. Um, <laughs> but it, 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 the smaller nations struggle because they don't have the number, you know, like GB have, you know, six, seven, eight of the best women For in the sure. world. So if you For want sure. to do a Madison session, you have these riders to practice with. But if you're like, I don't know, Lithuania, like you've, if you've got a, two riders, like how it's difficult to practice the skills involved in the Madison. So it's, it takes time for these things and skills to develop. But at this, at this top Olympic level, all of these girls are amazing at riding their bikes. So it's, it's you know, you, you, you've cut you've cut half of the world champs off. So it changes the dynamics of the race again. Like it's yeah, it's not going to be cagey. It's it's going to be full gas, hard. Yeah. I don't envy them. And it's going to be hot. It's going to be very very hot. 
Yeah, I mean, I I have a roommate who's going into games and he's trying to figure out everything to every cooling mechanism, he's even cutting out the bottoms of his shoes at some parts, venting uh, <laughs> and all kinds of craziness. So well, you, you um, probably shouldn't say that because that sounds very much like a customization to me. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not too many UCI account. Hopefully, they turn this off and call the UCI stupid at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know so. Um, I yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that they've done stupid. Like, why are the women doing half the distance? Why, like, team sprints, two riders, men's, like, oh, it's, no, it's, yeah. it's, just, well, just it's, back, this, it's just backwards. This game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah that's, it's, just, just for this game, because um, they, they've now made it three riders, uh, yeah. the team sprint uh, for the women. Um, and then, I, I mean, yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, the, with the Madison, it, what, the men are doing 50K? I believe, and then it's def it's it's definitely longer, I think. But um, yeah, and the women probably thirty to forty k. Um, one hundred twenty laps. I mean, the women. we just recently got around to, you know, the women doing a full four k team pursuit. You know, they used to do <laughs> what by in twenty twelve it was three k. Um, yeah, yeah. Some of the times from twenty twelve. Oh, it's gone. Riders. Oh, you you, you froze um, up. So. You froze up there again. But. Yeah. Yeah, I should be back now. I'm back now. Oh yeah, you're back. Okay, great. Sorry, you froze up. Sweet. Um, no, no worries. Um, you gotta love this the college Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I think, and especially in the Omnium. So I'm gonna go ahead and give like, I I, I think the Omnium this year, like I think Matt Walls is he riding? Is he riding the Olympic Omnium, or who did GB decide to go with? Uh, according to the start list, it's Walls on the Omnium okay. and Walls and Hater for the Madison. When do they have to? Because there's got to be a time that they have yeah. to certify it, right? It, it'll be the usual, like, an hour or whatever it is before hour the event. before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as of right now, I would like... I think he could do pretty well. Um, in, 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 he's he's, he's uh, cleaned up in a lot of races he's done. Yeah. And um, I, I, I honestly think that he could, he could definitely upset that Omnium. Um, Benjamin would Thomas. You, would you pick him over Ethan Hayter though? It, like, it's a, that's a difficult choice, difficult decision for Ian Dyer. Yeah, if we look at the schedule, I mean. And don't forget, you've got Ollie Wood on the squad, who's, you know, he's podiums at multiple Worlds, World Cups. Like, you know, it's this. I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to have to choose that squad. Well, I think if, if we're looking at medals, and I'm just, and I don't know these guys, <laughs> you know, that's another thing. I don't know these guys personally. I don't know their fitness levels. I don't know anything really about them except for watching them race a bike. Um, I think Ethan Hader is going to be in the team pursuit, and the team pursuit final is the day before the Omnium final. And so I would think Matt Walls, Omnium. America. And the, and the reason why I say that is because definitely Ethan's going to ride all three rounds. That's if it gets three rounds. I think they will. Yeah. And the, the, obviously the men, and, and I, obviously, so part of this, we like, when, I, when we first started this, I looked at the schedule and we were like, all right, let's plan out what we're going to do going forward. And like, the, it, it's all over the shop. So like the, the, the women's team pursuit is over two days, but the men's is over three days. So they get, you know, a, uh, that, that ability to back up a ride for the women, two rides in a day is a, is a challenge. Um, and again, that's going to, that changes the event in many ways. You know, it's very much it, so. It favors the sort of more critical, critical power aerobic dominating, dominated riders and sort of the, the big chunky weapons, you know, yeah. the fast switches are going to, you know, it takes, it takes us like, you know, three, four hours to recover back to top level really. And you're not going to get that. Um, this is so for the, women's that'll change the event and i wonder if there'll be the strength and depth that, that a lot of squads have like will usa be able to ride two different squads can they rest a rider uh i think off technicality they can rest a rider because you have Emily oh yeah but but, but do they have do they have someone that can fill in at that yeah, world class level yeah. yeah i mean i do, I've, I, never, I I've never i've never seen a do team suit yeah, yeah that's the thing like i think she was so young yeah when, they did the like because they were i remember when she went to junior road worlds and they were trying to get her into the team and she was just she was too young to be a part of the team and they, like <laughs> pretty much 
the way worlds landed they were able to take her to ride the madison at worlds yeah um, and that because of her birthday or whatever you know um so yeah, like, what, here's your first team pursuit race is the olympics no pressure <laughs> yeah so I, I i don't i don't know i yeah. think i think you can go ahead you, you can do all the simulations you want behind closed doors as soon as you get to that olympic stadium or any race people change you know and yeah. it's it's that uncertainty that some of these younger riders are either going to do really well or really badly um yeah and it, it's not it's not it's not just their performance it's the others around them so if you've got a if you're in the team and you're a trainer you know like you do really well on every training session but suddenly the, the three girls around you suddenly bring their level up by 10 watts that and you don't you 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 don't magically find an extra you know 20 kilojoules of energy to produce during the race like you're going to get dropped yeah no, um but there's a lot of but yes but the, anyways the, the, the squad depth for that will help and equally with the going back to the sprint um that's they've got half an hour 30 to 60 minute gap between three rides in a day so the danish with not danish the dutch with four riders they've got matthias buckley to super sub um that's a big advantage for them you can just rest rest hoogland for a ride and still have one of the fastest teams in the world yeah and then that that's another reason why i'm kind of like all dutch for this team sprint because it's just like yeah it's silly. Uh, i just think that the depth the 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 ride is like when you have a guy like tail boss who is no longer in question or even in the talks i mean when we 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 brought it on we were talking about it on the podcast he's like yeah all three of them are going to try to go for the kilo i don't even know if i'll get accepted <laughs> for the key for the team to go ride the kilo like because all three of them are trying to do it and they'll just you know and so it's it's wild to think about um uh the the just level of of talent and then on top of that just the the, the how they're all pushing each other like they're all trying to get better they're all trying to beat each other it's just it's it's insane um but morale <clears throat> yeah morale um but anyways you know i don't want to don't want to overdo it on our intro episode and and and, and, and totally get people to tune out so we'll, we'll how have long the next did, episode how long, how long did we get to well <laughs> we're at we're at we're over now if, if anyone's made it this far i'm sorry <laughs> yeah and so we'll have we'll have our next episode where you know we're hopefully gonna uh you know august obviously it'll come out august 3rd but um you know it starts on august 2nd um we'll do i think you know we'll chat about this here in a second but i think we'll do two more episodes right before it just to kind of get things ready get things prepped and uh yeah other than that guys thanks so much for listening we really appreciate you coming on and uh listening to us but yeah we'll have these coming out every single day while the olympics are going on especially during track and uh yeah we'll see you if you time. have any questions or special people you want us to talk to as well um yeah I'll, we're, I'll, we're working on love that. sliding into the dms of people yeah. so we can even if it's like a little crappy voice message from deep inside tokyo holding camp like <laughs> yeah yeah because i want to know uh, that's another thing that i want to talk about in the next episode is uh what's going on in holding camp because i, I know i'm not going to mention his name but i know a guy who's bought a foldable bike pretty much and has snuck it in so he can possibly train inside of his room because he doesn't think he'll be able to train um, or leave the camp so he wants to ride above two hours and he thinks that they'll get like an hour long at a trainer session, you know, everybody. <laughs> so he's like trying to get extra time. And so he's snuck in rollers and all kinds of crazy shit. Like, um, we haven't even mentioned the COVID. And that's like, well, we have, but not the. No, yeah. I want to dive into games. it a little deeper, but, um, but anyways, guys, thanks so much for listening. Yeah. Shoot us a message. Uh, you, um, Johnny Wales, Instagram stuff will be down below. My Instagram stuff will be down below. Um, other than that, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Ta-da.